Now, rape, it's one of those crimes which we all think we know when we hear about it. Sexual assault is easy enough to define, and improving police and judicial practices has been one of the ways in which society has tried to rectify an historic prejudice against women. But suddenly, increasing numbers of us are apparently finding it harder to explain precisely what rape is, or increasing numbers of us are making excuses for male violence. Not everybody needs to be asked. If it's a legitimate rape, uh, the female body has ways to try to... Sexual insertion with coercion. Once upon a time, no meant no. Now both left and right hear tones of ambiguity. Allegations of sexual assault and rape against Julian Assange have fueled the debate. Across the Atlantic, a right-wing congressman used what he thought was biology to redefine the offence. If it's a legitimate rape, uh, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. But let's assume that maybe that didn't mm -hmm. work or something. Even feminists are divided. The writer Naomi Wolf was quick to pick holes in the Assange case, claiming it to be a politically motivated witch hunt, despite him refusing to face questioning in Sweden. Wolf also argues that his accusers should be denied anonymity. So can there be times when no doesn't mean no? And why has the definition of rape suddenly become so contentious? OK, with us now is the feminist uh, writer Naomi Wolf, author of The Beauty Myth and soon to be released Vagina, a new biography. Um, why is this suddenly becoming so talked about as an issue? Uh, sexual assault? Yeah. Well, obviously there are some high-profile cases, but it's clear that, um, and now I understand this better, that when women make tremendous strides forward, uh, rape and discourse about rape is used to undermine them, call them into question. Um, but you've got two, two separate issues here, it seems to me. Um, your video introduced the Assange case, and just for the record, I'm not saying that those women should be quote unquote unmasked. I'm saying that it serves rapists to have rape prosecutions be prosecuted under the cover of anonymity altogether because it gives impunity to prosecutors. Let me give you some statistics. Well, uh, yeah, the law was changed in this country, I mean, 1970 something or other, uh, in order that women would feel more comfortable. Exactly, and it's wonderful motivations, but the upshot is in Britain only 6% of reported rapes, which is a small fraction of all rapes, ever get. Uh, convicted and so uh, but that's what so I really want to stress. expecting women mm. to be to be willing to testify in open court with their full identity disclosed in a case which may or may not be successful. I mean this isn't what I came here to talk about no. but I do think like many feminists that rape shouldn't be stigmatized differently from any kind of assault and just like we expect uh, you know allegations of, of beating someone up or allegations of fraud to have both the victim and the perpetrator stand up and say this happened that's what justice is and more important it stigmatizes women ultimately and it allows impunity let me give you some other data it allows impunity for rapists and impunity for prosecutors in this country as well as in Sweden the reason I know that there is something very corrupt about the prosecution of the Assange case, and I'm not talking about the women right now, we just don't know enough, is that it is so profoundly different from, and I've worked with rape victims for many, many years, from the way rape is prosecuted for any other victim in Sweden. Right now in Sweden, Sweden has the highest rape rate in Europe, the lowest prosecution rate. Amnesty International says Swedish rapists enjoy impunity. Right now there are 600 Listen. women in Sweden waiting for shelter Listen. from vicious assailants when their lives and their children's lives may be at risk. There's not enough room for them. And when I called the Rape Crisis Center in Stockholm and Uppsala, including the government police hotline, there's no answering machine. So the idea that, you know, this is a typical prosecution, a, a fantasy of well, I don't think of, anyone's you know, necessarily feminist. suggested mm -hmm. that it's a typical prosecution, but why shouldn't one prosecution go ahead if the crime is alleged, when you, just because 
Various others are not going ahead. Certainly yet. there should be justice for rape victims. Right. There's no question about it, but it should be a single standard of justice. And I think that it insults the thousands of rape victims in Sweden who, you know, uh, let me just give you an example. Sure. When I called the rape crisis line in Stockholm, which, by the way, no reporters seem to do, is actually call the people in the front lines with rape, they said that in Stockholm, the most common kind of rape is exactly like the Assange case. Women who meet a man online, go to his apartment, consensual sex turns allegedly non-consensual. And sh the volunteer at Terrafem, which works with rape survivors, said that's exactly the, the kind of scenario that Swedish police do not prosecute because the woman is not considered innocent enough. And so that is a stigma but that on is rape, rape in victims your view, in Sweden. Isn't it? Of course it's rape. Obviously it's rape. I'm just saying there isn't a single standard for prosecution what? here. This is such what? a deviation from but the way most rape victims in Sweden are dismissed, disregarded, and I think it's insulting to rape victims. Are there any grey areas? I mean... No. When George Galloway says, if you get into bed with someone and have sex with them, and you wake up next morning and that person is having sex with you or attempting to have sex with you without you having said yes, is that rape? Well, at that point, ideally, if you're not fearful or frightened of violence, you say no, and then yeah, there's a clear communication. If there That's has the law. been no explicit communication, is it rape? The law is that you need to get consent. I mean, that's just the law, that, that you need to either know that you don't have consent for it to be rape, or else, you know, there has to be a broken social contract. That's the law. The law is that you need to know that you've got active consent. So there is no ambiguity in your mind about this? In this situation? Yeah. About what? There I is mean, no ambiguity. Rape is rape. Yeah, look... It, it is very important for women and men who feel like they're being assaulted to express that they have a lack of consent, absolutely categorically. You know, and I think, I think that's critical. But can I just pivot to something more important? Because we yeah. could spend all day long talking yeah, about on, gray areas, you know, in any human situation. More important is why, why are women being raped, okay? And why does society disregard it so much? And I actually know the answer now, which I didn't used to know before mm -hmm. I did the research in my book, which has a chapter on rape, which goes right to this question. Um, it turns out there's a lot of new cutting edge data, which is quite astonishing, on what the vagina does and what it's for. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that it's not just a sex organ, we all knew that, but that there's actually a brain-vagina connection, which more and more neuroscience is documenting. Um, it's one system, one neural system. And so uh, what happens to the vagina happens to the brain. So on a positive note, when a woman is well-treated sexually, when she's respected sexually, mm. when she knows about her body, wait, Jeremy, I'm going somewhere yeah, important. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah go on. Yeah, um, it boosts dopamine, opioids and oxytocin in her brain, which lead to confidence, self-knowledge, motivation, focus, goal orientation, sense of connection, creativity. But on the dark side, this explains so much misogyny, so much sexual assault, when you traumatize a woman's vagina in new ways that have been undocumented previously until the last few years, you are traumatizing her brain, even if there's no violence. So we saw earlier legitimate rape, right? Neanderthals think of legitimate rape as rape in which there's violence or there's mm. the threat of violence. But this new neuroscience shows that any rape, which always involves fear, is traumatic to a woman's brain and body for years. You know, lasting harm changes the autonomic nervous system, constellations of symptoms that uh, seem unrelated to the ori original rape. Naomi Wolf, thank you very much. Thank you.